The 6.5 is on the road here at Dell Technologies World 2024. We are in Las Vegas, Nevada. This event is off the chain. I mean, it's AI, pretty much everything. AI infrastructure, AI PC, AI software, AI services, and all the partners that bring this together. Daniel, that keynote was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was great. I mean, you know, a number of people that you and I work closely with, respect very much different perspectives. We had silicon, we had infrastructure and deployment, we had software. You know, we were at, uh, you know, ServiceNow recently and heard a lot of this from Bill McDermott. We were at GTC and heard a lot. Right. It's great to see it all come together. And with that group on stage, what we were really seeing is this left to right, the yes. partnerships, the ecosystems, and all the enthusiasm. And Pat, I have to say, it was just really refreshing to see it, hear it, and feel it. And you can feel it out there on the floor yeah. as well. Let's just jump right in. I mean, our guest needs no introduction. Michael Dell, great to see you. Great to be with you guys. Gosh, happy 40th birthday Thank you. to the company. You. And I got to tell you, I really loved your book because it not only gave you the, the whole story of Dell, but you also put it out there personally. I just wanted to thank you for that. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was a fun opportunity to kind of tell the real story of what happened. and. Uh, also, you know, I don't do this very often, but kind of what I was feeling, what I was thinking yes. through all those moments. And uh, hopefully it's, it's, it's something that uh, helps other people. And, you know, it was, it was, a, it was a lot of work, but, but I had fun doing it. Yeah, it, thank you. It helped me. And, you know, I think I sent you a note at one point on, on Axe. You know, you're, you're always so gracious and responsive, but I sent you a note because I'd read your book and I said, you know, Going through that sort of play nice, but win, and that process of understanding that at times you have to focus ahead, and at times you can let the noise in, and you know you you went through some pretty difficult times, but you know I think the scoreboard is reflecting that you've gotten a lot of things right, <laughs> and I think this AI and this, just what's gone in the and in the last year. I also do want to, you know, Pat, is it is it appropriate for us to remind Michael that it's also our 10 year anniversary? And I don't know if you know this, but you actually brought us together, Michael, 10 years ago. On, yeah. on this stage, Dell World in Austin, Dan awesome. and I hosted. Congrats, guys. No, I That's appreciate awesome. that. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> you brought us here to do the broadcast. So uh, it was the first time, yeah. and that's where we met each other, and then the rest first is time. history. But uh, listen, you know, you heard us kind of tease. You guys are killing it. Love it. I appreciate that. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> if we're sitting here with you. Um, <laughs> listen, I, <laughs> uh, you know, the keynote was really encouraging to hear because, like I said, this is about driving productivity into the world. This is about growing GDP. And by the way, there's a lot of kind of, you know, let's just say not everybody's as rosy about it. So it's good to hear people who have watched industries grow, have pioneered and seen economies grow. And as every industrial revolution, I loved Bill's story about 40 years ago, everybody's job would be gone. 40 years later, tens of millions of jobs later, technology continues to create and, and, and scale. What is your sort of way though to keep pace and make sure that Dell not only takes advantage of this moment, but stays ahead as AI continues to proliferate? You know, I think the biggest formula to stay ahead is, is to listen, right? And, and to understand what the requirements are and not be too fixated on the way you did it in the past. Yeah. And be able to reimagine and sort of aggressively say, okay, this is where we're going. And, you know, to try to understand this moment, it's a little hard because it's all happening so quickly. I think about, you know, originally in the, in the 60s, you know, you had like five computers. <laughs> then you had the microcomputers and the, min, you know, the, sorry, the mini computers, then the microcomputers. Right. All this took many, many decades, right? Then you had the internet, but even that took like, a, you know, a decade. Exactly. This is all happening in like a year or two. So it's super fast, but I think actually, None of this would have happened had we not had all those prior waves and now all this incredible data and all the advances in semiconductor technology and networking and many ways, you know, we're kind of prepared for this moment. Yeah. AI was everywhere in all your announcements and every, every part of the chain. So we all saw where you put, you're putting AI, but question I have for you is, what was your approach? How did you know where, how do you know where to put that first? Because 
it's not like there is a lack of opportunity. I mean, you have a thousand places you could put it, but you can only afford or or your customers really only want it in a certain place. How do you approach that? Well, again, it starts with sort of understanding what are the customers want, wanting to do. And we saw this pretty early with, you know, uh, high performance computing and accelerated computing, GPUs, and the build out of these big training farms, and then customers, enterprise customers saying, well, how do I get in on that? Right. And, all right, now you've got to organize all your data because just having the <laughs> compute, well, that doesn't really solve the problem. And, and now we're at the point where it's a repeatable motion and we know how to stand up the networking and the storage and the GPUs and the software and we've you know, made the easy button to help customers do it. Right. Um, and now we've got the AI PCs and again, you sort of look at your whole business and say, all right, we've got this incredible capability that's coming at us super fast. How do we reimagine everything we're doing right. give, given all this? Yeah, I've been um, kind of throughout the day even, you know, Pat and I sometimes invent these market textures that become part of every future episode we do. And throughout the day, I've been calling it kind of the great reset that AI has created for companies, right? Companies that were up to the inflection of AI in compute, in network, in storage, their business had to be almost completely reimagined from the ground up as this AI trend came to the surface. And we're seeing in the market the way the market's responding to Dell. You know, I love that moment of Jensen walking around at GTC. I think, I think it's been played a few million <laughs> times, pointing over to Dell and saying, you can get everything you need to build your AI or AI factories. And, and then I think, uh, you know, I asked Yvonne in an er interview earlier, I go, how do you feel to be a meme stock? I mean, joking, <laughs> but like all of a sudden, because you're not, but mm -hmm. like this parabolic market perception and the excitement. Yeah. And by the way, these ecosystem partners, Jensen on stage with you, Bill McDermott on stage with you, like you're growing your ecosystem so fast. Talk a little bit about and that. And more tomorrow. The, okay. you know, we're, we're just... So tell us a little bit about this collaboration and ecosystem growth. What's, what, what do we have to look forward to and how does that come about? Yeah, well, you, you can't really do any of this by yourself, right? <laughs> and yeah. the power of, of ecosystems has always been something we've, we've uh, you know, built upon and how we built our business. And so that's our natural instinct is to say, how do we get all these companies and be able to bring all that capability to, you know, to our customers? And, you know, look, uh, we're very fortunate. We have incredibly broad customer base. We're in every country in the world that we're allowed to be in. <laughs> and, you know, the, the, the range of solutions that we create is as broad as you can imagine. And yeah. so uh, that necessitates having, you know, the broadest ecosystem. Um, and again, it's this simultaneous innovation across all these different elements and bringing that together. You know, uh, the, 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 the incredible pace of innovation in open source models. I mean, you could spend a lot of time just talking about that. And, you know, a year ago, we were talking maybe a little bit more about closed models. That's right. And a little less about open. Now it's kind of flipped the other way, and now we have these small models, and you know, it just it just keeps going. And, and you know, the innovation in silicon across the whole ecosystem. One of the other things we figured out very quickly was, gee, you know, a, a CPU server has maybe seven terabytes of memory. Okay, and we got these GPU servers, and all of a sudden, the customers are saying. I need 200 terabytes, 400 right. terabytes of memory in the server. Like, holy smokes, I mean, these servers are just devouring data. So you need a whole different storage architecture right. with a parallel file system to be able to feed the data in fast enough to support the B200, you know, and all the additional things that Jensen and others are working on. And then you need networking because the whole plot is how do you connect all these things together to create one giant computer, right. right? That's creating all this intelligence. So 
The whole thing has to be redone, re reimagined. High bandwidth memory, another great example. And, uh, you know, for, for customers, it's kind of confusing, right? It's like they, they, they're looking for a partner. So here we are. Yeah, I have to tell you, if I chronicle the history of your company, uh, the timing when it all comes together and people need that, that, that easy button, Dell is, is, it's clear to me your opportunity and I see all of these different things lining up in, in your favor right now and it's gotta be exciting. Now, you know, with power- Energizing for our team too. Totally. You know, <laughs> oh, well, I can see it. I can see it on them coming in here and I've, I guess this is my 12th Dell world uh, Dell EMC world, Dell Technologies world, and, and I see it on their faces. It, it's evident that it's there. Now, with great power comes great responsibility, and I'm curious as it, as it relates to uh, responsible AI, how are you approaching that? Is it a guardrail system? Is it a top 10 list of things to, to watch out for? How are you addressing this? Well, I think every company needs to have an approach to this, and certainly we do ourselves for both responsible AI and the governance of the data and the systems that are around these systems. But you know what, what we're not doing is sort of dictating that for our customers. Well, it varies, yeah. right? Well, and, and when you talk about what these systems are gonna do and what the models are, hey, we've got you know pretty much every customer you could imagine. Right. And uh, you know, I mentioned earlier in one of the sessions you were in, I thought we sold like 900 million computers. Well, uh, you know, anything you want to do with, with, with a computer, our system probably did it. Right. The vast majority of those things, by the way, are good things. But not all of them are good, yes. right? And, and so, you know, we can't control everything that happens with these systems. Now, there are regulations and controls, like export controls, who exactly. you can sell to, all that. Obviously, we'll, you know, abide by those. We even help the regulators and give them ideas about how they can, you know, do this in a thoughtful way because they have a huge challenge, right? If you look sure. at a regulation from a year ago, in the light of day today, with how many advances have occurred, it's a very hard thing, for sure, to come up with a regulation that that makes sense. So, uh, but internally, you know, a lot of you know, uh, steps to make sure that we're using all this in a responsible way. Very pragmatic and mature way to look at it, if you ask me, because I do look at some of other companies' ways of approaching it, and you just, it, it's very hard to, 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 to do that historically, and no, I, I like the approach. Yeah, it's interesting, too. It's going to be probably one of the most difficult cat-mouse games ever played, and, you know, the industry always goes faster. It just does. We haven't caught up from, you know, the last three digital transformations that have gone on. We haven't, from the mobile era, the social era, regulation never really quite caught up. They try, but then innovators come and innovate. Yeah. And, and, you know, challenges like cybersecurity, challenges of, you know, managing how much AI is, is utilized in, in defense, things like that. And we're trying. We're trying to control what chips go where. And, it's hard, and then of course sustainability we didn't even get to, but you know we know that there's this big conflict of wanting to do good for the planet, and then also AI uses a ton of power, and we've got to solve that problem. And if we had more time, I'd, I'd love to get your your take on that one. But how about we end on a happy note instead of me, yeah. you know, pouting about power consumption for a minute, <laughs> Michael? In 40 years, 40 years. Congratulations on that. It's 40 years. Uh, yeah, look, it's it's been it's been uh, a, a lot of a lot of great fun. But it, as I said in my keynote, I think it's all just a pre-game show. Yeah. And the yeah. speed at which we're advancing scientific discovery and we're effectively creating intelligence and you know causing all these organizations to be more efficient, more productive. I think ultimately that's going to expand human potential, expand the economy. Yeah. Um, and, you know, uh, it, it, it really is a, an exciting time for sure. Well, Michael, I want to thank you so much for joining us here on the 6.5 at Dell Technologies World 2024. 40 years, big AI inflection point, and the markets are, are absolutely screaming your name. Yeah. And, uh, 
excited to have you back and thanks for joining us. Thank you guys. Thanks, thanks very Michael. much. Appreciate that. All right, everybody out there, hit that subscribe button. Join us for all of our coverage here at Dell Technologies World 2024. For Patrick Moorhead and myself, though, we have to go. We'll see you all very soon.